Hey guys, so this week we're talking about the fullness and power of the Holy Spirit. Once again, we're covering this again because I do not believe we're operating in the power uh, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Bible says that when we uh, are endued, uh, or when we receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, we're endued with power. Uh, Jesus came and baptized us with the Holy Ghost and with fire, which speaks of the power. Um, we're to be doing the things that Jesus Christ did, and even more, the Bible tells us, um, because he's gone to be with the Father. That refers to the fact when he goes to be with the Father, he's sending his Holy Spirit in us. So when we receive this power from the Holy Spirit, things should change all around us. So that's why, once again, we're reviewing this. Uh, on Monday, we talked about the fact that the Holy Spirit alone turns the Word of God into the sword of the Spirit. Spirit. Uh, then uh, Tuesday we looked at the fact that the Holy Spirit alone makes effective praying possible. Uh, today I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit alone gives understanding of the Word of God. Now when we talked about it on Monday, remember um, he makes the Word of God to, to be a, in, into the sword of the Spirit. In other words, um, uh, uh, a a tool that we're able to use for ourselves in order to get rid of cut. Remember it says it pierces the division of the soul and the spirit. Bone of the morrow is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of heart. The, the sword of the spirit, the word of God, goes deep within us and and clears out those things that shouldn't be there. Well today though, I want you to see that it's the Holy Spirit who gives us revelation to the Word also. Look with me at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 through 18. It says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give a thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The, again, notice it says that may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That is a powerful powerful pa uh, passage but notice that it's the Holy Spirit that gives us Revelation. Well, let's uh, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And shoot, I mean, I, I really need to read a lot more than I thought I was going to read. But let's go to uh, verse 6. And it says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Now, once again, that's why we're covering this again. Because we want to continue to mature, grow and grow and grow in the Lord and the understanding of his word. So as we study this, it says, we speak wisdom among those of you who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. See, he's talking to the mature Christian. Amen. Um, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Okay, now, so this talks about um, this hidden wisdom uh, being a mystery, and it's hidden. But, but watch what it says. It goes on to say in verse 10, it says, But God has revealed them. Revealed what? Revealed the mysteries to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. See, His Spirit knows Him because He is God. He's the third person of the Trinity. That's why uh, uh, He leads us and guides us all into all truth. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, it says that we have an anointing from the Holy One the Holy Spirit, and we know all things. How's that possible? Because we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us, and He has revealed the hidden mysteries that were from the beginning of the ages for our glory, and He's revealed them through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Um, if you look down in verse 15, I'm sorry, um, 14, it says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he, he know them because they are spiritually discerned. This shows us that the things of God are spiritually discerned. So if you are not operating in the Spirit, 
If you're just praying words and not praying in the Spirit, if you're not living your life in the Spirit, if you're not desiring this relationship with the Spirit, then these deep things of God are not revealed to you and you're operating as a natural man and you cannot discern spiritual things. Man, that is a cowboy no-brainer. That doesn't take much to figure out. We need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Know that he's on the inside. Know that we've been endued with power. Know that he gives us revelation to the truth and tells us things to come. Know that we know all things because of the anoint that we re anointing that we receive from him. And begin to walk that out. Speak that out. Live that out. Not be afraid to lay hands on the sick and cast out devils. And do the things that Jesus did. Amen. That's good. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.